Is it God versus science? Let's meet our panel. Here in Los Angeles, John MacArthur, pastor, teacher of the Grace Community Church, author of The Battle for the Beginning, Creation, Evolution, and the Bible, host of Grace to You, and president of the Master's College and founder of the Master's Seminary. In Baton Rouge, Louisiana, in Los Angeles, Deepak Chopra, the best-selling author, How to Know God, and founder of the Chopra Center. His blog site, www.intentblog.com, now has a discussion on the topic of creation versus evolution, Theory. John McCarthy, do you believe that the world is only 5,000 years old? Oh, no, I wouldn't say necessarily 5,000, but I would say I doubt that it's more than 10,000 years old. So all this other proof of millions of years of cavemen don't mean anything? Well, I, I think there may have been cavemen, but I don't think millions of years has been proven. You don't think any of that has been proven? No. All right. Hold on. Uh, Dr. D Dr. Forrest, your concept of uh, how can you out and out turn down creationism since if the evolution's true, why are there still monkeys? Should it be taught at all? But it should never be presented to children in a science class in a public school as science, because it isn't. It's a religious belief. Deepak, is it a faith issue? It is a faith issue. I totally agree with her. I think uh, we have to look at the scientific evidence, which says that the universe is 13.8 billion years old. The planet is only 3.8 billion. Human beings have been around for 200,000 years in the form that we know them. But, you know, hominids have been around for a long time. Now, having said that, there is evidence in science that there is creativity in the universe, that consciousness may not be an emergent property, that physical matter may be an emergent property, that consciousness conceives and governs and constructs and actually becomes what we call mind and then body and the physical universe. Yeah, well, I think intelligent design is the only possible scientific position to hold because we have intelligence in the universe. It has to come from intelligence. Because we have complexity, it has to come from complexity. The silver bullet, Larry, is DNA. Before an understanding of DNA, uh, there was a lot of confusion and a lot of belief in evolution. It was like the emperor's new clothes. It was really naked, but thought it was dressed up. Before an understanding of DNA, uh, there was a lot of confusion and a lot of belief in evolution. It was like the emperor's new clothes. It was really naked, but thought it was dressed up. DNA has, I think, spelled the end of traditional naturalistic evolution, which essentially says complexity comes out of simplicity. It can't happen. The silver bullet is not a single example of reproduction leading to an increased amount of genetic material right. necessary to produce a more but complex it, organism has ever happened. As someone religion, religion, though, you can't prove Adam and Eve, can you? No, I don't, I don't think you can prove Adam and Eve, except that you know somebody so was there believe, to begin. You believe it. Yeah, well, we're, we're talking about two different things. Intelligent design is the only rational way to view right. the universe. Somebody right. intelligent made it. Religion does, does and who that intelligence you, is. Does it ponder you who made the intelligence? Who well, created I, the creator? I accept that the Bible mean. as the source, the authoritative source that tells me it was God. And something or someone has to be eternal. And the Bible says it is God who is the eternal one. See, when he says that, he's denying all of biology, all of anthropology, all of geology, all of astronomy, all of cosmology, all of evolution. It's all of physics, that, all of chemistry, and all, everything that we know, uh, that we have learned. Uh, now, I do agree with uh, Dr. Richards, who says that there is evidence that we need to understand Darwin's theory a little bit better. Or, you know, it's, it's a little 150 years old. Is it possible for an ape-like creature to become a human? <laughs> well, let's, let's. They tell the kids that the human and the chimpanzee are related. The human and the orangutan are 96% similar. That proves a common ancestor 15 million years ago. 
Who this is baloney. Barney Maddox, the leading, leading genome researcher, he said, the genetic difference between human and his nearest relative, the chimpanzee, is at least 1.6%. That doesn't sound like much, but calculated out, that's a gap of 48 million nucleotides, and a change of only three nucleotides is fatal to an organ animal. There is no possibility of change. Kids, when they tell you that you have proof for evolution because the human and the chimpanzee are similar DNA, they're confused or they're lying to you. Actually, they've now discovered the difference is much greater. It's now 95% similarity instead of 98.6. We've got tons of material on this on our website. The similarity between humans and chimps is much greater than they thought. I mean, the difference between the humans and chimps is much greater than they thought. Um, similar structures nearly always have similar plans, like DNA in this case. Similar bridges nearly always have similar blueprints. This hardly constitutes evidence that one sired the other or that they were erected by tornadoes. <laughs> Folks, Complex things require a designer. And yet they tell the kids that humans and chimpanzees are similar. There are thousands of differences. But even if there are some similarities, so what? If you think the percentage of similarity proves something, let me show you the research I've been doing. I've discovered that clouds are 100% water. Watermelons are 97%. Only 3% difference. That proves watermelons evolve from clouds. And I discovered jellyfish are 98% water. And so are snow cones. <laughs> that proves how they evolved. Mm -hmm. If I told you, <clears throat> if you kissed a frog, it would turn to a prince. You say, no, frogs don't turn to princes. How many of you ladies got your husband by kissing a frog? Come on now, let me see. Only two, okay. <laughs> Doesn't happen very often. But in the textbooks it does. Yes, boys and girls, we started like an amoeba. And we slowly evolved to a frog. There he is, Grandpa. And then very slowly evolved to a prince. It's the same, same fairy tale. Frog turns to prince. But see, instead of a kiss, no, they got a new magic ingredient. If the frog turns to the prince quickly, we all know it's a fairy tale. But if the frog turns to the prince slowly, that's modern science. It's the same fairy tale, folks, but they have a new magic ingredient. The new ingredient to turn the frog to a prince is billions and billions of years. How many have ever heard that expression before? Billions of years ago. It's on TV. It's on Carol Pagan's, Sagan's uh, show, Cosmos. Billions and billions of years ago. It's in the magazines. It's a national pornographic. I'm geographic. No. Billions and billions of years ago. Here's a fourth grade textbook. Millions of years ago. Now, kids, listen. If anybody ever says, millions of years ago, just say, uh, excuse me, were you there? <laughs> They'll say, well, no, of course I wasn't there. Then you can say, now, teacher, do you know the earth is millions of years old? I mean, is this really part of science? Is this something we can observe and study and test and demonstrate in the laboratory? Or is this just something people believe? They're going to say, well, everybody believes the earth is millions of years old. No, they don't. Most Americans think the earth is less than 10,000 years old and God made it. Only 4% are atheistic. I think that 4% ought to go start themselves a private school and teach evolution to anybody that wants to pay and come learn it. And they ought to get it out of our public schools. That's my unbiased opinion. Yeah. The evolution theory says this is grandpa. Now, maybe that doesn't offend you, but it ought to offend you if you love the Lord that they're teaching you came from an ape like ancestor. And the Bible says we're made in God's image. So what is the truth about the so-called cavemen? Those pictures you see in your book, kid, are pure imagination on the part of the artist. The per person who's commissioning the art can say, well, I want it to look a little more ape-like or a little more human-like. They can make it look however they want. Any artist can tell you that. Jack Cuazzo studied the Neanderthals very carefully. He went and studied the originals. He brought an x-ray machine with him. He's a dentist, studied... Uh, 32 years, he studied the growth of the human face as an orthodontist. You know, when you put braces on a kid who's 12 years old, it'd be nice to know what his face is going to look like when he's 40 to make sure the teeth still work. You don't want to arrange them so they look good when he's 12 and look bad when he's 40, right? So he studied all the original Neanderthals, the actual ones. He said, folks, the Neanderthals are nothing but old people with diseases. See, before the flood, they lived to be over 900. After the flood, they still lived to be 400 years old and then 200, and then 100. Well, the bones of your face never stop growing. 
Quasel's got an excellent book on that and videotapes on this topic. The bones of your eyebrow ridge grow all your life. You don't notice it until you get to be 70 or 80 or 90 or 100 years old, but they start to stick out. A person that lived to be two or 300 would have big eyebrow ridges. And the back of the head would elongate because of the muscles always pulling your head back. That's where they attach. So the Neanderthals were nothing but perfectly normal humans who were living to be two or 300 years old. They're not missing links. Or you can get the book Buried Alive. You can get it from our website or on our catalog back there. Cro-Magnon man was perfectly normal in every respect. So why do they call that a missing link? You put a suit and tie on him, walk him down the street, and nobody would look twice. They've got one in your textbooks now called Australopithecus africanus. That was proven wrong in 1973. It's not a missing link whatsoever. These guys spend all their free time digging in the dirt looking for bones. My dog did the same thing. <laughs> this textbook says, you're an animal and share a common heritage with earthworms. Question. If evolution is true, how are the kids supposed to tell right from wrong? Question. Exactly how do we tell right from wrong? Pretty scary thought. Charles Darwin said, Often, a cold shudder has run through me as I have asked myself whether I may have devoted myself to a fantasy. Well, Charlie, you did devote yourself to a fantasy. If you believe you came from a rock 4.6 billion years ago, you need help. You were designed for a purpose. Now, what is it? There are four great questions that every single religion in the world tries to answer. Even atheism, which is a religion, you have to believe there is no God. There's no way to know that. The four great questions every religion tries to answer. Who am I? Where did I come from? Why am I here? And where am I going when I die? The way you answer these questions depends upon how you view the world. There are basically only two ways to look at this world. One view says, you know, there's incredible design. There must be a designer. That's the creationist worldview. Other people look at the world and say, you know, nobody made it. It just made itself. They don't believe God created the heaven and the earth. They think a big bang made this world from nothing. They attempt to declare what they believe. Humanism is a religion. You have to believe there is no God. So why is this theory dangerous? Evolution, I am convinced after studying this now for 30-some years, evolution is absolutely the foundation for communism, Marxism, Nazism, socialism, racism. We'll get into some more of that in a minute. Number one, I think evolution is dangerous because it's bad science based on lies. Well, here's a textbook used in Minnesota, and it says that all of these ones in the circle here have been proven wrong, but they're still using them as evidence for evolution. They're lying to the kids. And they're calling, used to call modern man homo sapien. Today they're t calling us homo sapien sapien. Wow, what does that mean? Well, sapien means wise. So today we're the wise, wise man. That's interesting. You know, the Bible says, professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. Now, if you believe your ancestors were a monkey, you're a fool. There's no question that some of my ancestors probably swung by their necks, but none of them swung by their tails. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> now look, if you find a fossil in the dirt, all you know is it died. You don't know it had any kids. You sure can't prove it had different kids. And why would you think a bone you found in the dirt can do something animals today cannot do, which is produce something other than their kind? Hey, did you know chimpanzees are still having babies? Why don't they make another human and let's watch it this time? Hmm? See, evolution only happens in the imagination, never in reality. Humans never have any gill slits. It's a human at conception. It's not a fish or an amphibian or anything else. And abortion is murder, plain and simple. Okay? The appendix is not vestigial. You do need your appendix. The whale does not have a vestigial pelvis. That is a lie. The human tailbone is not vestigial. If you think it is, I'll pay to have yours removed. <laughs> Dinosaurs did not live millions of years ago. Man did not evolve from animals or cavemen. The Big Bang is a big dud. It didn't happen. The horse series in your textbooks is a lie, proven wrong 50 years ago. Life cannot evolve from non-living matter, like the textbook says. The law does not ban teaching creation science, like some people want you to think. It's perfectly fine to teach creation science in the public schools. We'll get into more of that later. Smaller is not simpler. A little paramecium is more complex than a space shuttle. Smaller is not simpler. Smaller is more complex. But birds did not come from dinosaurs. Talk about a dumb idea. The eye did not arise by slow changes over billions of years. The first bird did not hatch from a reptile egg, like Goldschmidt said. 
The trees of life in the textbooks are pure imagination. They didn't happen, folks. They drew it on paper, and that's as far as it goes. It didn't happen in reality. DNA does not prove evolution. It proves creation. It proves a designer. Fossils do not provide any evidence for evolution. Fossils don't count at all. You find a bone in the dirt, you can't prove that bone had any kids, <laughs> let alone kids that lived, and certainly not kids that were different than the grandparents. Fossils simply are a dead-end street. They don't count for evolution. Notice what the textbook says. 30 million years ago. Now, kids, let me translate that for you. Anytime a book says millions of years ago, what it really means is long ago and far away. It means a fairy tale is coming next. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 30 million years ago, these critters evolved. Ooh, there's that word again. You've got to watch that one, remember? Six different meanings. It says they're ancestral to both humans and modern apes. Ancestors to humans? Grandpa? <laughs> you know, we've been teaching our kids they're nothing but an animal, and today a lot of them act like animals. Barbara Reynolds figured it out. She's a liberal journalist. She said, your kids go ape in school? Here's why. He's being taught evolution. Guess what, Johnny? You're an animal and share a common heritage with earthworms. Uh, you mean I'm just an animal? <laughs> okay. <laughs> what do you expect? Have you noticed the rock and roll music these days is all full of death and destruction and blood? Oh, well, the Bible says they that hate me love death. That's the problem. Kids are taught today there are no absolutes. By the way, if evolution is true, that's exactly correct. I've asked this question to evolutionists all over the world. I've never had one answer, a simple question. I'll say, hey, sir or ma'am, I have a simple question for you. If evolution is true, how do we tell right from wrong? How does anybody tell right from wrong if evolution is true? They say there are no absolutes. One professor I debated said there are no absolutes. I said, are you absolutely sure? <laughs> blew his little brain. Now, wait, 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 how can I be sure of that? Yeah. Yes, there are absolutes. Thus saith the Lord. That's absolute. And the Lord said, ye shall not make any cuttings in your flesh for the dead, nor print any marks upon you. Some people, maybe, maybe they just don't know. Okay, I understand. Maybe they just don't care what God's Word says. But God told us what to do, and we're not doing it. Okay? Anyway, that's another long, interesting story. Uh, but if a teacher does get up in front of their class and teach evolution, if you get up there and say, okay, kid, listen, you started off like a slime and you very slowly evolved to a human. You don't need to be a genius to figure out that teaching is going to destroy some kid's faith in the Bible. And anybody that destroys a child's faith better see what Jesus has to say about that. He said, whoso shall offend one of these little ones which believe in me, it were better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck and he were drowned in the depth of the sea. Jesus said, be not, or James said, be not many masters, knowing we shall receive the greater condemnation.